Hello everybody. This video is going to be part of my series on 300 dental anatomy facts that if you know you're going to ace this part of the boards. And the subject for this video is just miscellaneous. And we're going to get started on the excursive movements. Okay, so when the mandible moves from centric occlusion, so here we've got posalts, I have no idea how to say that, by the way. Envelope. Um, so we're going to start from CO, and then when we go edge to edge, the condyles move forward and downward. So you can kind of see when looking in the envelope that when the mandible moves from centric occlusion to edge to edge over here, that the mandible is going to be moving down and forward. And then uh, the non-working condyle. So just a quick word on what the non-working condyle is. Uh, if you take your two hands and you put them on your cheeks, you know, right hand on your right cheek, left hand on your left cheek, and move your mandible towards the right, then that is the working side because it's. I think of it as it's making your hand do work. It's making your hand move. So that's the working side, and the other side would be the non-working side. Now, if you have your hands up on your cheeks and you move your jaw to the left, it's doing work on your left hand, and so now the left side is your working side, and the other side is your non-working side. So uh, the non-working um, condyle moves downward and forward and medial. This is a very common question on the boards. They love to ask this type of question. So here we've got a picture here, and uh, you can see this is the non-working side, and during a shift, the non-working side is going to move downward, forward, and medially. Okay, uh, continued here, anterior guidance plays the greatest role in discluding the posterior teeth in lateral protrusive movements. So you can kind of try this as you um, shift your jaw towards the left or right or even forward. You can tell that it's disocluding your posterior teeth. And then here, uh, teeth are in contact in the intercuspal position during non-masticatory swallowing. Tooth contact almost exclusively determines intercuspal position. And so these two points right here are two points that you see come up a lot on the boards. So we have centric relation versus centric occlusion. Okay, intercuspal position is the same thing as centric occlusion. And so you'll, you have to know which is a tooth related position and which is a ligament guided position. So centric relation is a ligament guided position and centric occlusion is a tooth guided position. Just think of the name, centric occlusion. You know, it tells you right in the name that it only has to do with your teeth. It's when your teeth are occluding together. It's the most comfortable fit that your teeth come together in. Okay, we're going to do this famous guy's envelope. Okay, so in his envelope of motion, the maximum intercuspal position is the most superior point. So if you come over here, you can see that this is the most superior point. And uh, centric occlusion equals intercuspal position. And then when the mandible moves from CO to edge to edge, the condyle moves forward and downward. And so we kind of went through that already, but I wanted to put that in this category with the envelope. Okay, we're going to go over a couple excursive movement terms, Bennett movement, postural position, and the curve of SPIE. Okay, Bennett movement is the side shift of the mandible. The side shift of the mandible is also known as the Bennett movement. So when I had you putting your hands on your face and shifting your jaw to the right and to the left, that bodily movement of the jaw is known as the Bennett movement. So Bennett movement occurs during the earliest stage of lateral movement. 
and the Bennett movement is the bodily shift of the mandible toward the working condyle. So that's important. So when your jaw moves to the right, and that right side is the working side, the Bennett movement is the bodily shift of the mandible toward the working condyle. Okay, postural position. If you look in the envelope, we've got this part on the outside, the outside of the envelope, and then on the inside, we've got the postural position right here. So we have CO and we drop down to postural position here. So the physiologic rest position is also known as the postural position. It's going to be two to four millimeters below intercuspal position or centric occlusion. Note here, this is kind of important, it's not a border position. And you can tell that because it's not on the, on the envelope. Remember, in order for it to be a border position, it has to be on the outside of the envelope. Anything inside is not. And the mandibular postural position is determined almost exclusively by the behavior of the mandibular musculature. So it's a muscle-guided position. If you move from the postural position to, the, to centric occlusion, um, you will be using the anterior fibers of the temporalis. So if we go from postural position to centric occlusion, we've just closed our mouth and we're using the anterior fibers of the temporalis muscle. And so the anterior fibers of the temporalis muscle are going to elevate the mandible. Now this is, uh, this is just terminology that you'll see on the boards, which can be a little confusing, but when you think about it, when you elevate the mandible, it's the same thing as saying closing the mouth. Okay, we're going on to this curve of Spee and the curve of Wilson. So the curve of Spee is the anterior, so we'll start here, anterior, posterior, so front to back, anterior, posterior, curvature of the occlusal surface as seen in a facial or buccal view. Now the way I think of this is think we as you slide down. So imagine yourself on a sled here at the, bo at the back and you're sledding down and you then you say we. So curve of spee, we. And then the curve of Wilson here, I just imagine a W being inserted into the palate. And that kind of helps me think of the curve of Wilson. So you see the curve here, right there, curve of Wilson. So I just think of a W in the palate, and that helps me remember that's the curve of Wilson. Over jet, over bite. Okay, the usual over jet is about two to four millimeters. And so here we've got some over jet. So over jet is the horizontal overlap. So it's this, see this red line right here? That's the amount of overjet we have. And the overbite is the vertical overlap. So that's this line right here. And the way I think of this is uh, for overjet, it's horizontal. So I imagine a jet flying on the, across the horizon. And then for the overbite, I imagine, I think of it as when you bite down, you know, when you bite your teeth, you're going in a vertical motion going up and down. So over bite, bite in a vertical, over jet, the jet is going on the horizon. Now we're going to go through some dental tissues. So we're going to do enamel, dentin, and cementum. So enamel is the hardest dental tissue. The main component of enamel is inorganic matter, not collagen. And the direction of the enamel rods in the permanent teeth is in the, in the cervical third, is in the gingival direction. So 